Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. Today we're diving right into the internet of things and how it intersects with blockchain. Welcome to our new series on digital identity. In the first episode, we'll put an emphasis on the identity of things and how blockchains can provide fast and secure communication between IOT devices. In the future episodes, we'll explore digital identity in autonomous vehicles and supply chains and later look into how distributed digital identities can benefit users. We publish three videos every month, two in-depth explorations into fascinating world of blockchain, and one video where we summarize the most important events of the previous month. If you wanna stay up to date with our content, be sure to click that subscribe button and hit that little bell and always get notified when we drop a new video. Also, be sure to check out our Medium blog at medium.com slash at block essence. See the link in the description below for details. Now, let's talk about digital identity. What is digital identity? A short and clear definition of this phenomenon is information used by computer systems to represent an external agent. That agent may be a person, organization, application, or device. In this episode, we'll focus on the latter two agents, applications and devices, and we'll look at identifying machines and systems digitally. This concept of giving machines their own unique identities is usually referred to as identity of things, or IDOT and is a very important component of the Internet of Things. In the following episodes, we'll look at more complex systems that require reliable IDs, such as autonomous vehicles and supply chains, and later, we'll also investigate digital identities of humans. The Internet of Things slowly becomes less of a future promise and more of a reality for most of us. Seeing that everyday household items like a fridge or a washing machine come with a companion app is less of a novelty and more of an expectation at this point. This reality brings both a lot of convenience and a lot of risk into our everyday lives. And these issues will only become more pronounced as more devices come online. Many of those challenges pertain to security. After all, vulnerabilities of IoT are well documented in TED Talks, articles, and demonstrations. Numerous groups of white hat hackers work tirelessly to uncover the next rushed and unsafe IoT product. But of course, the threat of hacking is not the only reason why IDOT is so important in the context of smart devices. The products need to be able to reliably communicate, interact, and build complex systems. What's crucial here, those requirements need to be met by products coming from various manufacturers and brands. The typical interactions that IoT devices need to be able to manage are human to device, device to device, and device to service interactions. Of course, every single interaction needs to be precisely directed and reach its intended addressee. Just imagine a situation where you buy three smart plugs to be controlled with your smartphone and your IoT app can't distinguish between them. Well, that is still a mild inconvenience when compared to someone interacting with your smart home by simply owning the same device as you. It does get a bit scary. So, let's break down how IoT devices can potentially communicate with each other. Of course, there are multiple protocols available, but in principle, we can identify the following six standards. Satellite, which includes wireless data transfer, such as GSM, LTE, 5G, etc. Wi-Fi, which uses wireless local area network, WLAN. Radio frequency, RF, which includes low power radio protocols such as Zigbee and Z-Wave. RFID or radio frequency identification, which uses wireless electromagnetic fields to identify objects. Bluetooth, which is a wireless technology standard for exchanging data over short distances. And NFC, near field communication, which uses electromagnetic induction between two loop antennas located within each other's near field. These standards have their own strengths and weaknesses, but every single one needs to identify the devices precisely in order to work. And what's more important for the end user, this needs to happen seamlessly and without a need for constant management. So what does blockchain have to do with it? Anyone even mildly interested in DLT immediately identifies the promise blockchain holds for the internet of things and digital identity. Blockchains have the possibility to precisely and immutably identify devices as unique entities by hashing or by using non-fungible smart contracts. This means that because of the sequential cryptographic hashing of each block, it is computationally infeasible to rewrite block history. And if you need a refresher on fungibility, the word means interchangeability. 
Fungible items are, for example, traditional currencies because you can always exchange any given one euro coin for any other one euro coin. Non-fungible items cannot be exchanged for one another. They can be considered unique. What's more, the decentralization aspect of DLT means that hacking or altering any records would be significantly more challenging than with a centralized system. Due to a blockchain's node design, with each node being hosted by different parties, disrupting the system by getting authentication data of a single party is particularly impossible, even if the security of one network participant is compromised. The integrity of the rest of the system should remain intact. This mitigates the single point of failure concern that many people express regarding centralized IoT devices and systems. We can clearly see that blockchains hold a lot of promise for IoT, but as we all know, there are certain challenges to be overcome. With a projected number of devices connected to the internet and with the need for their interoperability, scalability is the first significant issue. Consensus is the second one. Of course, we don't want our fridges and washing machines to perform increasingly difficult mining operations to meet the proof of work requirement. That would be a waste of energy and resources. Nor do we want them to hold excessive amounts of tokens to take advantage of the proof of stake protocol. That's why for IoT, different consensus protocols are needed. Probably the best known example of a blockchain solution that wants to interact with the internet of things is IOTA. Although calling them a blockchain is a bit of a misnomer, their ledger has no blocks and no chain. Instead of miners, IOTA takes advantage of a network of users or nodes that are asked to perform small proof of work operations validating the previous two interactions. The fundamental paradigm shift of IOTA is its democratic approach to participants. The ledger doesn't really care if the participant is a human or a device. All participants contribute to the machine economy that IOTA strives to build. If this sounds to you like a paranoid dystopian future from a Philip K. Dick's book, don't worry. IOTA claims that transaction fees are going to be really low. So the risk of a door refusing to open if you don't pay is rather small. IOTA also recognizes that each IoT device needs to have a unique, immutable, and tamper-proof identity information tag. Dominic Shiner, the co-founder of the IOTA Foundation, recognizes the necessity for IOTA to handle identity tags as well as additional information including manufacturers, life cycle, and whether it collects and sells data. At the same time, Dominic went on record saying that implementing identity of things is probably the most complicated development Ever. When it comes to the Internet of Things, IOTA has already entered into a strategic partnership with a household appliance giant, Bosch. Together, they are developing XDK, a cross-domain development kit. It is a IO prototyping platform and a powerful sensor node solution. The cooperation will take advantage of the IOTA data marketplace to broker encrypted device data. In April 2019, IOTA also announced their partnership with Jaguar Land Rover to develop a wallet-based hub for integrated services. We'll talk more about IOTA and the car industry in the second video of this series, where we will focus on autonomous vehicles and supply chains. Stay tuned and subscribe not to miss it. Another project aiming to disrupt the IoT ecosystem is MXC, or Machine Exchange Coin. The project specifically targets the Low Power Wide Access Network, or LPWAN, a type of wireless telecommunication wide area network designed to allow long range communications among connected objects. The goal of MXC is to minimize data collisions between LP WAN devices, which mostly operate on the same frequencies, by using MX protocol that prioritize communication between participants. In addition, MXC aims to become a data broker that takes advantage of machine generated data to facilitate the development of AI and other complicated integrated systems. Of course, there are many more IoT projects that try to include DLT in their designs. Examples of such projects might include IoT EX, IoT Chain, or Helium. Let us know in the comments if you'd like us to cover any of these projects in more detail. That's it for the first episode of our series on digital identity. The next episode will take a deep dive into autonomous vehicles and supply chains. Make sure to subscribe not to miss it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog. The link is in the description below. Before you go, 
Please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you for watching.